Are you here for Miss Chen? Business or pleasure? We need her help to find her friend. Business. Please, wait here. Miss Chen will see you in a moment. I don't know why we keep coming here. She's a... Man, come on. Have some respect for the woman. Dog always finds her helpful, and right now, she might be the only one who can point us in the right direction. All right. Miss Chen is ready to see you now. I can't trust you to keep silent, so I'll better go in on my own. Yuriko, in your eyes I see a sad glow. Come and tell me, what do you want to know? It's a long story. Tell me the whole story, in all its detailed gory glory. Dog trapped in a cage? <laughs> oh, so vaudeville. But how does the story end? Don't leave standing still. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit ridiculous, but that's what happened. And when I came back, Dog was gone. Swoosh! Please, Yuriko, spare me your sound effects. Tell the story straight, or you will make me vexed. Sorry. The thing is, Dog is gone. And so was the receptionist. There was no one there, and I don't know what to do. Hmm. It seems that yours and Dog's investigations have the same fate. To find one, you must solve the other at any rate. Look for eyes that might have seen. Use your skills so they come clean. You mean the receptionist? But I don't know where he is either. Did you hear that? It sounded like someone creeping out of our car and hiding somewhere nearby. Yeah, me neither. The receptionist is one option, yes. But that was not my first guess. I was thinking about consulting with the dead. That is someone who's unable to have fled. The dead? How? If finding Doc Mendoza is your goal, you must go deep into the rabbit hole. You don't need to despair and resort to prey. To contact the dead, there are many a good way. Here in Chinatown, a book of spells you'll find that for a moment, your soul to deads can bind. Find all the ingredients, don't go blind, and the results will blow your mind. Only for $69.99. I don't have any kind of money. I'm an unpaid apprentice. <sighs> then I wish you lots of luck. Can you at least tell me which ingredients I need? You'll draw a circle on the ground if you want to travel safe and sound. With a pencil or something? I would rather use some chalk, and I would listen instead of talk. Then a candle with nice aroma will put your mind in a dream-like coma. Coma? I'm liking this idea less and less. Add a silver chain to your collection. It will grant you great protection. From the book, you must read aloud to be almost there and make me proud. And a dash of black powder you must throw to light up the room and finish the show. Okay, to sum it up, find the receptionist and find the spell book, a piece of chalk, a silver chain, a scented candle, and some black powder. Got it! Don't be scared to give me a shout. And come back to me if you're in doubt. Oh, one more thing. It's dangerous to go alone. Take this. A taser? In case someone but me, your lips try to kiss. Thanks. Bye for now, I guess. It's just a plain, odorless candle. I think nobody's gonna miss it.
Hey, open up! What's the password? Shen sent me. Blah. I'll just come in, you train pig. One shifty looking gremlin. He owns and operates his own pawn shop. Well, well, well. And what brings an over evolved ape like you to a place like this? I'm looking for a book. Maybe you've heard of it. It tells how to contact a ghost. Maybe I have. Maybe I don't. You could refresh my memory if you catch my drift. I have no money. No money, no deal. Okay, I'll just take a look around if that's not a problem. No biggie. But don't you even think of taking any of my stuff. What you want? What do you know about gypsy curses? That you have to be soft in the head to believe in them. But if you are soft in the head and believe in them, I, I got a plenty of counter curse to sell. I'll take my chances, thanks. What you want? Hey, that's a nice chain you have there. Oh, yes, it is. Pure silver. Werewolf's bane, soul protecting. It even makes demons itch. Can I have it? Only if you bring me something older. Like a piece of history. Okay. What you want? Never mind. It'll come in handy. I should take a glance now, write down what I need, and maybe buy it later. Ha! <laughs> I said buy it. With my salary. Good one, Eureka. Good one. It says here that I need to draw a ritual circle around the subject that's going across to the other side. To light a candle with a nice smell that soothes the body and opens the mind. To wear a silver chain to protect my body from evil spirits while my soul is gone. Recite some words too long to remember and throw some gunpowder into the fire. It says, flashy lights will be the showstopper of your homemade ritual. That's not how I want to end up. Quite unsatisfying, no doubt. Nice sneakers. I wonder if they'd fit me. Hey, where do you think you're going? Give back the book. Sorry. Have a nice day. And do come back when you have some money. Thanks. Bye for now, I guess. Can I have some fireworks, sir? Sure. You can get as many as you want, as long as you pay for them. I don't have money, like, at all. The item money is absent in my inventory. Then piss off. Say, those are some gruesomely greasy noodles you got there. Noodles are the stuff of life. When the gods made man, they crafted him out of golden noodle string, and then perfected their creation by making the first woman out of chopsticks. They made them of chalk, I tell you. 
Our gods came here with the first brick of that well. Our family was here after the earthquake of 1755. It's the same date! Okay, I think someone is calling me over there. Now be a good Samaritan and help me out delivering an anointing bowl to a poor, poor burn victim. Yikes, all this grease makes them sticky. Where do you want them delivered? To an alleyway near Chinatown North. There, I once found a bandaged man, and I made it my personal quest to feed him. Since then, I bring him one plate of noodles every day and leave it in the open for that poor, shy man to eat. Bandaged man? Interesting. Ugh, it's so sticky now. There's an inscription in the brick that reads, This is the first brick of Chinatown, put here after the 1755 earthquake. I wonder what wacky item I will need to loosen this brick and take it. Well, that was anticlimactically easy. You have many goods in this stall. Yes. And they are only for good customers. Right. I guess I need to find a way to distract him. Hey, I need some char. Could I have your statue? Absolutely not. That's a family heirloom from the times when my ancestors used to mine chalk in the chalk mines. Are you sure chalk is mined and not produced? How dare you? The last wish of my mother was to always keep it close to me. Right. Bless you. Thanks. I can't see a thing. Stupid pepper. Better pick up the chalk before he can see again. Oh man, some chalk just crumbled to dust. Let's try that out. Logic tells me it should smell like cinnamon now. trunk of the car. I think we traveled all the way from Hotel Romero with the trunk open. No, we didn't. It's my word against yours, Yuriko. Take the chain? But then how will people know where to wait in line? And if people don't know how to wait, how are they expected to know how to act? Chaos would reign! Fathers will kill their children and feast on their entrails! It would be horror! Ah, screw it. I'm taking it anyway. That's Miss Chen. You gotta admit, she wears the hell out of her costume. I wouldn't hit a lady. Least of all one with such powerful friends as Miss Chen. Miss Chen? Ask what you must ask, and I'll help you with your task. What do you know about gypsy curses? Take a word from the wise, and don't believe such lies. Thanks, Miss Chen. Ask what you must ask, and I'll help you. Where can I find the ingredients for the ritual? You'll have to be specific if you want my answers to be prolific. Where can I get black powder? Like the haiku says, colors in the sky, night's blooming fire. It's snowing on Mount Fuji. That doesn't rhyme. Haikus don't rhyme, Yuriko. Realize your rhymes seem forced? Well, I think you should be effed by a horse. And the metric? It's all over the place. Thanks for the feedback. Now get out of my face. Miss Chen? Ask what you must ask. 
I'll be on my way. Ta-ta, Yuriko. Yuck! These bandages are all greasy and sticky and smell like noodles. But there seems to be something wrapped beneath them. A box of matches from Motel Romero? This must belong to the missing receptionist. He must be close. I must find him and find out the truth of whether he is behind Dog's disappearance or not. That's a lot of oyster pails that used to have noodles in them. They look kind of greasy. I know that Dog doesn't pay me, but I'm still not searching through that greasy trash. Yuck! Imagine licking that. I could use this box to bait him out and track him. I think here is the best place. Oh, gee. I'm going to leave these tasty noodles laying on the floor for a while. I just hope no one steals them. Now I just have to wait. He must be invisible. That means that if he's not involved in Doc's disappearance, he might have seen who did it. <sighs> and now the dust is stuck to the grease of the keys, showing which ones the invisible man punched. Eureka, you're a genius. How come your greatest accomplishment so far has been to earn second place in a pizza delivery race? Never mind. Now that I see which numbers he punched in, I can crack the code. Okay, I know you're hiding here, and I know you're invisible. And in five seconds straight, you will tell me what the hell happened to my friend, or... Or what, Giza? Or I'll introduce you to my friend, Pazul's left hand. You'll have to catch me first, you dumb son of a whore. Why do I keep picking up disgusting stuff? What's wrong with me? Ouch! Ha! Take that, swine! Ouch! Had enough, pig! I wonder what someone that can't see himself does with a hairdryer. Ouch! Watch your step, geezer! Now we're both invisible. Oh, shite. Ha! You lost your advantage, Geezer. I can see your dirty feet on the water now. Oh, shite. I won't throw punches into the air hoping to hit it. There must be another way.
this is your last chance. You either surrender, or I'll fry your nerves with a 220-volt short-circuit zap. Wait, Chan, wait. I give in. Just don't do it. Oops. My hands are just slippery with all that damn grease. Oh, pal, you punched my lights out for a moment. I can still see stars. Why did you have to do that? Well, it's not like you were cooperating. We want to know what happened to Dog Mendoza. What did you do with him? You're wasting your time. I know nothing. I know my rights. I don't have to tell you a stigma on the cock shit. Yeah, well, why did you kill the man upstairs? That's clearly the reason why you and Dog were there. Kill him? I didn't do it, pal. You're pointing your finger to the wrong person. If you didn't kill him, why were you in the motel in the first place? What kind of ass backwards question is that? I work there. There's not much more to it. He's not cooperating. I need to know what he's hiding. Even if he's not a real culprit, he does know more than he's telling. Maybe he's got some key information on what's going on. What did you do with Dog? Where is his body? Wah wah, pal. Way to jump to conclusions. Who told you he was dead? That's not what happened. Well, if that's not what happened, you must have at least seen something. Do I look like his babysitter? He probably got in trouble for not minding his own business. Very much like you. Ouch! What was that for? To cut the crap. My friend's life is at stake. Now, tell me everything you know. All right, all right. But I don't know much. And even if I told you what I know, you still wouldn't believe me. Look, he was probably sniffing after the owner of the motel. The guy was under some really bad mojo. The lights went dark and, in a moment, your man was suddenly gone. Poof. Just gone. Maybe it has something to do with the owner. Maybe it was... It was what? Nah, I don't know. It's not like any explanation makes sense or makes me seem more innocent. Well, at least that's something. Why did you kill the man upstairs? The man upstairs had a name. He was called Roger, and I didn't kill him. So stop pointing with your finger and stick it deep up your ass. Well, if you didn't kill him, why was Dog investigating you? If I did kill him, why didn't he apprehend me at first sight? That's actually a good question. Maybe Dog didn't know it was you, but you're still our only suspect. Well, maybe you should start looking around for someone else. Yeah? Like who? Like I said, you are the only suspect. Have you tried talking to the other ones? Which other ones? Well, Roger was visited by two men, once every month. He would get all real nervous when they showed up. But it wasn't the only thing that made his hair stand up in the back of his neck. There was also this curse he would bring up once in a while, especially on stormy nights. Something of his past was chasing him, but I can't really tell you what. And can you tell me at least who these men that came to him were? Sorry, mate, but you're on your own. I don't know feck all about it. I knew it was something shady, so always minding my own business just to avoid this kind of interrogation. Hmm. Well, this actually gives me something to work with. What were you doing exactly at the motel? What kind of ass backwards question is that? I work there. It's not like I... It's not like you what? Nothing. What else could there be but work? I don't know. Why don't you tell me? What? You think there's something else? Well, there isn't. Stop it, pal, and quit staring at me that way. All right, all right. 
I admit it. I work at motels because they have many perks for a guy like me. I can go into rooms without people noticing me, and I get my kicks from spying on them. I also take stuff from them from time to time. I also rub their toothbrushes over my stuff. Was that any of your freaking business? I wanted to know something more, but I don't think I wanted to know that much. Alright, I think I heard enough. I will tell you what I think happened. You were doing your business, stealing stuff from other people, when the owner, Roger, caught you. That's when you killed him, because he knew too much. Then, Doc came in to investigate the crime scene, and you had to do away with him too. I already told you, it had nothing to do with me. Yeah, you talked about two other men, but can anyone testify their existence? Right now, it is only your word, and on a very flimsy trail. Why couldn't it have been your boss who killed him, and then cut loose? My boss was in a cage, remember? He couldn't have killed anyone. Look, I know how this looks. Even if I told you, you still wouldn't believe me. You keep saying that. Try me, because just like you said, this doesn't look good for you. Well, I told you already that I usually use my peculiar talents to spy on people and steal some things from their room. Motel Romero was no exception, but it was the crappiest place I've worked in. Almost no customers, never ever. And the few that came were scared by the owner. It's not that he was trying to be scary, but he always came up as a weirdo. Most of the times he was a pompous buffoon, but from times to times he would get downright creepy. He was obsessed with gypsy curses and immediately scared off anyone that came through the door. I didn't make much of it. Any monster with two fingers of forehead can tell you that there is no such thing as a gypsy curse. So I paid no attention. What about the two men? Were they regulars at the motel? The two men never stayed at the motel. They came to visit my boss once a month. Roger would get all jittery when they appeared. I don't know who they were, but his obsession with gypsy curses would skyrocket when that time of the month came. After dealing with this shit for some time, one night I went into his room to learn the combination of his strongbox. As I suspected, there was nothing of value there, just some old photos and a bust. This was the photo. It's just a picture of him when he was young and some broad. It's really old. 30 years at least. He was not even fat back then. He was even pretty buff. So I took the photo and kept it. I guess that if it was in a strong box, it should have some value to him. That's Nadia. Just like she looks today. Maybe that's what's chasing him. His gypsy curse. But how is that possible? A couple of days later, I was minding my own business when I saw a thing that was not supposed to be. Her. She looked as young as in the picture I had. A woman with eyes of glimmer green, the shrilling voice of a shattered soul, hair as black as a tattered night. The ghost of the gypsy curse. It simply could not be. The curse was real. The ghost was real. And it was after him. For when I climbed the stairs, all life had escaped his body. No wound as if he had just been drained. And when your boss appeared, she came back. Through the flicking lights, her skin gave a moonshine glow. My heart stopped. And when she was gone, so was your boss. Let's say I believe you. I still have one question. Why did you lock me behind the door? That wasn't me, pal. I had the shit scared out of me. Almost literally. But I was too busy getting naked and getting out of there, hiding in the trunk of your car. Well, I think that's it here. I can't believe I'm saying this, but I'm going to interrogate old dead Roger about this. What you want? Would you care to trade this fine and shiny old brick for your old and dusty silver chain? Are you trying to make me laugh? No! 
It's an ancient brick. An historic brick. Don't talk sweet, me boy. And let me look at that. You must have some Margonians to steal this and bring it to me. Mighty fine. You got a deal. Hehe. <laughs> I can't believe that worked. What you saying, boy? Nothing. But I feel like a dork for exchanging that brick. It'll come in handy. I should take a glance now. Ha! <laughs> I s Well, it's not like the book is running away or something. I should find another use. Have a nice day. Thanks. Got it. Can I have some fireworks, sir? No! Hey, what are you doing? That's dangerous! Don't do that again, or I'll break your hand next time. Can I have some fireworks, sir? No! What's wrong with your brain? Did your parents feed you lead paint? Don't do that again, or I'll break your neck and piss on your corpse! Can I have some fireworks, sir? No! What do I have to do to make you stop? Give you some fireworks? Grab some and beat it! Aw, oh, man! They broke when I put them in my jacket! These fireworks are truly a fire hazard. Pazul, on towards our next destination. That's the spirit. Back to Motel Romero. We have a ghost to interrogate. <laughs>